What's got into them? he demanded. But Harry had just seen Pavardi and Lavender come in through the portrait hole. The time had come for some drastic action. Wait here, he said to Ron, and he stood up, walked straight up to Pavardi and said, Pavardi, will you go to the ball with me? Pavardi went into a fit of giggles. Harry waited for them to subside, his fingers crossed in the pocket of his robes. Yes, all right then, she said finally, blushing furiously. Thanks, said Harry in relief. Lavender, will you go with Ron? She's going with Seamus, said Pavardi, and the pair of them giggled harder than ever. Harry sighed. Can't you think of anyone who'd go with Ron, he said, lowering his voice so that Ron wouldn't hear. What about Hermione Granger, said Pavardi. She's going with someone else. Pavardi look as- looked astonished. Ooh, who, she said keenly. Harry shrugged. No idea. So what about Ron? Well, said Pavardi slowly, I suppose my sister might. Padma, you know, in Ravenclaw. I'll ask her if you like. Yeah, that would be great, said Harry. Let me know, will ya? And he went back over to Ron, feeling that this ball was a lot more trouble than it was worth, and hoping very much that Padma that Padma Paddle's nose was dead center. I don't get that part. Okay. So that is the end of chapter 22. And now we are on to... Whoops. Uh, I can't see. Chapter 23, The Yule Ball. All right. I wonder how the Yule Ball is going to go. So we'll just have to find out next time. You still there? I'm done reading. You guys can go. But that's the end that that's the end of chapter twenty two. What? Why are you still That's the end of the chapter? What? Stop staring at me. Oh, <laughs> oh, you want, okay, I'm sorry, I didn't hear you, it's hard to hear through this, it's okay, oh, I get it now, you want me to read some of chapter 23, okay, okay, I will. Chapter 23, The Yule Ball. Despite the very heavy load of homework that the fourth years had been given for the holidays, Harry was in no mood to work when term ended and spent the week leading up to Christmas enjoying himself as fully as possible along with everyone else. Gryffindor Tower was hardly less crowded now than during term time. It seemed to have shrunk slightly, too, as its inhabitants were being so much rowdier. R-O-W-D-I-E, that's the way we spell rowdy, rowdy. Let's get rowdy. Rowdier than usual. 
Fred and George had had a great success with their cannery creams. And for the first couple of days of the holidays, people kept bursting into feather all over the place. <laughs> I said cannery. I'm sorry. Canary creams. You know, the trick, like the trick pastry thing that turns you into a bird. Fred and George had had a great success with their canary creams, and for the first couple of days of the holidays, people kept bursting into feather all over the place. Before long, however, all the Gryffindors had learned to treat food anybody else offered them with extreme caution, in case it had a canary cream concealed in the center. And George confided to Harry that he and Fred were now working on developing something else. Harry made a mental note never to accept so much as a crisp from Fred and George in the future. He still hadn't forgotten Dudley and the Tun Tung Toffee. Wow, we read about that one a long time ago. Snow was falling thickly upon the castle and its grounds now. The pale blue Bowbottom's carriage looked like a large, chilly, frosted pumpkin next to the iced gingerbread house that was Hagrid's cabin. While the Durmstrang ship's portholes were glazed with ice, the rigging white with frost, the house elves down in the kitchen were outdoing themselves with a series of rich, warming stews and savory puddings. And only Fleur de la Cour seemed to be able to find anything to complain about. It is too heavy, all this Hogwarts food, they heard her saying grumpily as they left the great hall behind her one evening, Ron skulking behind Harry, keen not to be spotted by Fleur. I will not fit into my dress robes. Oh, there's a tragedy, Hermione snapped, as Fleur went out into the entrance hall. She really thinks a lot of herself, that one, doesn't she? Hermione, who are you going to the ball with? said Ron. He kept springing this question on her, hoping to startle her into a response by asking it when she least expected it. However, Hermione merely frowned and said, I'm not telling you, you'll just make fun of me. You're joking, Weasley, said Malfoy behind them. You're not telling me someone's asked that to the ball. Not the long, molared mudblood. Harry and Ron both whipped around, but Hermione said loudly, waving to somebody over Malfoy's shoulder, Hello, Professor Moody. Malfoy went pale and jumped backward, looking wildly around for Moody. But he was still up at the staff table, finishing his stew. Twitchy little ferret, aren't you, Malfoy? Said Hermione, scathingly. And she, Harry, and Ron went up the marble staircase, laughing heartily. <laughs> Hermione, said Ron looking sideways at her, suddenly frowning. Your teeth. What about them, she said. Well, they're different. I've just noticed. Of course they are. Did you expect me to keep those fangs Malfoy gave me? No, I mean, they're different to how they were before you put that... They're different to how they were before he put that hex on you. They're all straight and, and normal-sized. Hermione suddenly smiled very mischievously, and Harry noticed it too. It was a very different smile from the one he remembered. Well, when I went up to Madame Pomfrey to get them shrunk, she held up a mirror and told me to stop she held up a mirror and told me to stop her when they were back to how they normally were, she said, 
and I just let her carry on a bit. She smiled even more widely. Mum and Dad won't be too pleased. I've been trying to persuade them to let me shrink them for ages, but they wanted me to carry on with my braces. You know, they're dentists. They just don't think teeth and magic should... Look, Pigwidgeon's back! Ron's tiny owl was twittering madly on top of an icicle-laden banister, a scroll of parchment tied to its leg. People passing him were pointing and laughing, and a group of third-year girls paused and said, Oh, look at the teeny little owl. Isn't he cute? Stupid little feathery git, Ron hissed, hurrying up the stairs and snatching up Pigwidgeon. You bring letters to the addressee. You don't hang around showing off. Pigwidgeon hooted happily, his head protruding over Ron's fist. The third-year girls all looked very shocked. Clear off! Ron snapped at them, waving the fist, holding Pigwidgeon, who hooted more happily than ever as he soared through the air. Here, take it, Harry, Ron added in an undertone as the third-year girls scuttled away looking scandalized. He pulled Sirius's reply off Pigwidgeon's leg. Harry pocketed it and then hurried back to Gryffindor Tower to read it. Everyone in the common room was much too busy in letting off more holiday steam to observe what anyone else was up to. Ron, Harry, and Hermione sat apart from everyone else by a dark window that was gradually filling with snow. And Harry read... So, it appears as though he's just gotten a letter from Sirius. But I'm not going to read it right now. We're going to read it in the next episode.